not going to be enough. There was many that followed Jesus part of the way. If you remember when he went out, thank God, when he was getting ready to ascend up, he had even proved, thank God, beyond the shadow of a doubt that he had raised from the dead. And they even touched his hands and he, and he sighed. And they saw, thank God, that he had risen from the dead. But when he got ready to go up, thank God, and he got ready to leave, uh, he told them, before I go, uh, he said, go down to Jerusalem down there and you tarry down there until you be endued uh, with power from on high. He, yes, he told them he wanted them to preach uh, the kingdom. He told them he wanted them to live right. Uh, but he's first thing he said, I want you to go down to Jerusalem. Uh, I want you to go down and finish the thing. you got to have something to go with tonight. Well, thank God, I, I read in the Bible, Brother Johnny, where they did. The Bible said one place there was about 500 of them. Thank God there was out there when Jesus ascended up. And he said, why do you men, you men stand here gazing? They're saying, Jesus, who you see going away, he's coming again in like manner. But I read somewhere in, the, somewhere in the Scriptures in the book of Acts, thank God. But there was about 500 souls, souls there that day when he ascended up. But I look at 10 days later, thank God, down on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 of them that was left. And I've just wondered many times, what happened to another 380 people that went out there and he told them to go down to Jerusalem, uh, thank God, and, and, and be endued with power from on high. Somebody wasn't listening, thank God, or somebody forgot, uh, or somebody had something else to do. Uh, that's just the way it is today. With people, you tell people, thank God, that it's up to you to finish the work. You've got to finish the course. You sisters that have babies, once you start that pregnancy, once that baby comes into your womb, all you just got to say, Yes, yes, yes. No matter what happens, whether you suffer, whether you bleed, or whether you have to have a sincere there ain't no way out of it, but you've got to bear that child. That child has got to come forth. Let me believe that tonight. Well, the Bible said we got to be born again. Amen. And what's inside of us, it needs to be born, thank God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. That's why people say, well, i got the Holy Ghost. Well, if you've got it, you get it the way they did in the Bible. Amen. But if you want to go with me tonight, I'd like to go to the 10th chapter of the big book of Corinthians, or Acts, I'm sorry. The 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Amen. And I can only give you what God gives me. Amen. And I, I want you to, to take heed. Amen. People have gone, haven't gone far enough. God has got more tonight. If you've made a start for the Lord, I don't care where you go. God's got more for you. He's got more for you. And the only thing that's standing in your way is your own self, your own flesh. You might say, well, my preacher or my mother or my brother, but it ain't your brother and it ain't your sister, but it's you that's standing in the way of yourself tonight. And you're the only one that can change that tonight. That's why God has given us a book, thank God. And He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. You've got to lay down your life, take up your cross, daily and you got to follow after him and you can't just do it your way this ain't mcdonald's uh, or burger king you know whatever they used to advertise do it your way we got to do it god's way and the only way i know is when we get in the book uh, the good old king james version uh, and we begin to read it uh, and we begin to study it uh, and if we got questions that's unanswered uh, the bible said if you ask you shall receive uh, if you seek you shall find uh, but you got to ask uh, and you got to seek Seek after God if you want an answer. But Paul said, I've fought a good fight. And I've finished my course. He said, therefore, he said, there's a crown laid up for me. But you know what? Not unless he finishes the race. The Bible said many is in the race, but there's only one's going to win the prize. Amen. I've been in a lot of races, Brother Johnny. Amen. I used to race my boys. But you know what? They, they, if they was faster than me, they was going to get there. And that's just what I'm saying. We're not in no race with one another tonight. That's what a lot of people make it. This church is going to make it first in that church. But there ain't going to be no stars in heaven. There ain't going to be no place for this group and a place for that group. Just like Brother Johnny said a while ago, there's only one church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. There the only church that I can find in the Bible is the church of Jesus Christ. All the other churches, Brother Jim, somebody, they've been added along the way after the day of Pentecost, after the apostles died off, and it's time went on down through all the churches and all the men and all the elders and down through even into our 
Lord's day, people just goes and opens up a door somewhere and we're going to start a church. But you know, I want you to know tonight, you know what the word church means? It's not even in the Old Testament. Did you know that? The word church is not in the Old Testament. Thank God they, he referred to it as a synagogue or the house of the Lord or a congregation of the Lord. Thank God. But today, everybody talks about we go to our church. But you know what church is? Thank God that means people that's called out. People that's dedicated. Thank God to the Lord. Brother Jim, I, 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 I believe that we're called out people. Amen. And we're called by His name. Amen. And you say, well, this is the only church here in Hanging Rock. No. Amen. God's got churches all over the world. Amen. They need to forget about the doors and the names on the doors. Uh, they need to follow after God. That's what we need to pray. You're never going to get the Holy Ghost praying in the name of Baptist. You're not going to get the Holy Ghost praying in the name of Holy Ghost and in the name of uh, uh, Apostolic or Pentecostal. You're not going to get the Holy Ghost. He said He gives everything in His name. Hallelujah to God. He said we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But we got to do it in His name. Amen. I believe we got it. Whatsoever you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. When we sit at the supper table, we say the blessing. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When I go to bed at night and I say my prayer, I say in the name of Jesus Christ, Brother Jim. Amen. In the morning when I get up, I say in the name of Jesus Christ because I know Him. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm glad. I know Him. Thank God. He's in my life every day. And I'm still trying to follow Him. I don't know all the ways. I don't understand all the scriptures. But I've got to walk in what God showed me. But this man right here, his name is Cornelius. At this time, children, the only people that was in the church was the Jews. The only ones that was in was just the Jews. No Gentiles, no Romans, no Italians, no Chinese, nothing else. No race except Abraham's sons. Was what, that's what Jesus even said. He came to his own, and his own received him not. That's who he came to. And the day of Pentecost, that wasn't for the Gentiles or any other nation. Amen. There was a lot of people there, but the only ones that the Holy Ghost came to that day is it came to the Jews. Amen. Because he had promised to go to them first. And Apostle Paul, the Bible says that as we read that Apostle Peter, he had the certain he had the, the, the apostleship to the circumcision, which was the Jews, and Paul said he had the circumcision to, to the uncircumcision, which was the Gentiles. He was, a, he was an apostle of the Gentiles. That's why we got 14 books by Brother Paul and I. He was the apostle of the Gentiles, and he's the one that set up the churches. Uh, he's the one that got them started. Amen. But it took Christ to do it. Uh, the Bible said he was one born out of new season. Uh, he wasn't with the other 12, uh, but he was by self. He met the Lord on the way to Damascus. Hallelujah. When the Lord spoke from heaven and blinded him, said, and he asked him things. He said, Who? He said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I'm Jesus, Paul. It's hard for you to kick against the priest. He was going out hailing people and putting people in jail. In other words, he was a strict Jew. He was a Pharisee of the tribe of Benjamin. He'd sit at the feet of Gamaliel. He, he was a great man and as far as knowledge and understood things. But you know what, Brother Jim? He, uh, he knew the knowledge that the Jews had. Thank God. They never had the knowledge that Christ was coming. Amen. They knew He was coming. But they are still looking for Him to come. But He ain't came yet. But He came on the day of Pentecost of then. And when that's the Bible now, children, you get in here and you read it with me. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, it was to the Jews. That was, right. That's who it was. That might sound strange to you tonight, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And then we get on over, thank God, in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, and, and we'll find how Philip went down to Samaria, and he began to preach Jesus Christ yeah. down there. And there was people down there, there was great miracles going on. There's great revival down there. And the Bible said people was being healed, and people had deliverance, thank God. But you know what? They, they didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. Yeah. Amen. But they built the Bible said they had great joy. I tell you what, when you come to the Lord and you make a start, you got great joy. When the devils go out and you're free, you got great joy. And I tell you what, there's more than what we have tonight. 
You say, well, I've spoken in tongues. Well, that's good. But the Bible says that's just the earnest of our inheritance. That's, right. that's just the beginning. The Bible goes on and teaches in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians about going on and putting on charity. About going on. We talked the other night about the fresh oil. Amen. God wants us to go on. When we make a start, that's good. But then you've got to continue. A lot of people have started, but they've not continued. There's many that came, thank God, and, and made a start for the Lord. I've heard people get up in the church and say, God showed me that this is where I'm supposed to be and this is the best church and it wouldn't be a few months and they'd be gone somewhere else. Yeah. Amen. Thank God and living and walking in or some other doctor. But I'll tell you what, if you can't sit under it, thank God, then you don't need to be here. Because yeah. this is all we can teach right here. Is how this right here? We can't teach nothing else. No. I don't have no books to read. I don't have no commentaries up no. here. I'm not saying that we don't have the knowledge and that we go to books to learn because we, God wants us to educate ourselves, thank God, but just like He did in the Bible. But the thing about it is, we got to do it the way that God does it. But as we get into the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, Maybe I'm going to do a little teaching tonight. Well, he's going to teach on that Holy Ghost again. Had an old sister who used to pick her up. Hey, Amen. She's gone now. She's in a wheelchair. We went up to get her. She lived up in the projects up in town. And uh, she, uh, she got in the car and she said, Now I'm going to tell you something. Brother Glenn said, I don't believe in that Holy Ghost. He said, before we go down there, before you get up and start telling about the Holy Ghost, I don't believe in it. And I said, sis, just come on to church with us. Amen. Just come on to church. And as time went on, as she came. I don't know how many times she came, but she, she got pretty regular. And then one night I got up and I preached on the Holy Ghost. And she got upset with me. And she went home, and, and, and she just wasn't going to come back to church no more. And, and she got a hold of her daughter, and she said she wasn't coming back here. She said, and so I went up to see her, Brother Jim. And when I went in her house, I talked to her, and she said, now, I told you, well, when you come down here and got me, that I didn't believe in that Holy Ghost. I didn't believe in that. Amen. And I told you that. And, and I, so I just sat down there with her and I began to talk to her. And I began to show her the scriptures, you know. Amen. That it's really in here and it's really for you. And you know what? But she began to tell me, she said, well, I'll tell you. When I was 16 years old, me and this other girl, she said, we went to a holiness church up somewhere in like some tent meeting or something. And she said, I saw women fall down and her dress went up over their head. And she said, and that is not the Holy Ghost. And I said, that that's exactly right. That wasn't the Holy Ghost. But all her life, that's what she thought the Holy Ghost was. When you see people fall down or dress over their head, you can see a lot of things on TV. Amen. People running around. But I'm going to tell you what. If the Holy Ghost is real, there's a false teaching and there's a real teaching tonight. And there's a delivering God tonight. He told us to go down to Jerusalem and tarry until we be endued with this Holy Ghost from on high. And as they been, when well, they lived there and persecution come against the church, and they begin to spread out and they begin to carry this message uh, as they went about, thank God. That's when we read about the conversion of Paul and, and we read in, uh, in Samaria, thank God, how that there was great, they had great, great joy in the city. But it said they, they didn't even went far enough to get baptized. Mm -hmm. But it said that they didn't, have never received the Holy Ghost. Right. They hadn't been baptized. They believed there was great joy. They was having a church service going on. They was having a hallelujah meeting. But thank God, even that old Simon, the sorcerer, he got baptized too. There's a lot of people who get baptized. Amen. I don't make them saved. The Bible said he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If we don't believe, they're not going to be saved anyway. He said he that believeth not shall be damned. That's not my words. That's what the scripture said. But when he went on, the Bible said when Peter and John and those of the elders, they was the Jews. When they heard, thank God, the elders of the church heard that they had received the word of God down in Samaria. This in eight chapter of the book of Acts, they went down there, the Bible said, and they, they said that they had all, they'd all been baptized, but they had not yet received the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said they laid hands on them, and they got the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Now, I tell you what, I, I can believe that tonight. Amen. But you know what? It's still just the Jews. Yep. You know, the Samaritans was, they was half Jews and half somebody else. 
In other words, the Jews hated them because they married out of the faith and they was married into other nations and they called them Sumerians. Amen. They was on the other side of the fence. Amen. If you remember the woman at the well in the fourth chapter of St. John, how that the woman's at the well, they got talking to Jesus and she, she couldn't understand why Jesus would ask her for a drink of water. Thank God. Because she was a woman of Samaria. In other words, she wasn't acceptable of the Jews. Uh, Jews didn't have nothing to do with her. But he told her, he said, woman, if you knew who it is, uh, that's talking with you. And if you knew the gift of God, uh, you could have asked for a drink of water and you'd never thirst it again. Uh, hallelujah, God. And she began to say, she said, give me of this water. Amen. And I may drink. Uh, hallelujah. And not be thirst again. She wanted a drink of that water. All right, go get your husband. She said, I ain't got it. He said, That's right. And the one you got now, I said, You've had five, and the one you got now, it's not yours. That's what Jesus told her. Amen. But when that when she told him the truth, she had a repenting heart. Amen. And she got a she got a blessing from God there that day. Amen. She didn't get the Holy Ghost because it had not been given yet. The Holy Ghost couldn't be given until after Jesus had risen from the dead. How many believe that? In other words, the Holy Ghost couldn't come to nobody. Amen. The seventh chapter of the book of St. John said that it, it fell upon none of them, thank God. Amen. I'll tell you what, and that woman that's Samaria, she got a great blessing. And she went everywhere and she began to tell him, said, let me tell you about a man and told me everything that I ever did or I ever knew was not this the Christ. She knew who he was. The elders didn't know. The Pharisees didn't know. Jesus stood in the midst of them. The doctors, the, an old Herod, when he asked them, he said, "This, he said, where is supposed this Christ supposed to be born now? <laughs> when they heard about his birth, amen, and when they heard that he was, uh, there was a king coming and the kings was looking for him, amen, that they might worship him. And when old Herod found out about it, he went to the elders of the Jews. He said, where's this Christ? Uh, where's this king of the Jews supposed to be born now? They knew that in the book of the... Uh, of, uh, Micah, amen, in the fifth chapter, he said, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come he. Thank God, that's where Christ was born. He was born in Bethlehem. Amen. He was born, he was King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was God in the Spirit. He came down and was born in the flesh. Amen. He was God all in the beginning. He is God in the sonship. And he's God in the church today. But let's read what happens. Chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. Right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian man. He wasn't a Jew. He was an Italian. And even to top that, he was a centurion. You know what a centurion is? That's a Roman general. He wore all that armor and had that big plume over top of his head. Amen. Well, I imagine the Jews really got upset when Peter went down there to him. He said, he ain't like us. He's not like that. He don't go to our church. But you know what? God showed him that he needed to, He needed him too. He needed salvation too. But he just didn't find any old body. But listen what kind of man he was. He might have been an Italian. And he, he, wasn't, he wasn't saying children. But listen what kind of a man he was. He said he was a devout man. And one that feareth God with all of his house. Which gave much alms to the people. And prayed to God sometimes. Always. Always. He's always praying to God. Amen. And he was a good man, wasn't he? Yes. Amen. And he said, and he saw in a vision. Now, he was close enough to get a vision from God. Mm -hmm. But yet he still didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have went far enough to repent of their sins. Yes. And he, some of them went far enough to be baptized. Even some that's come here, thank God, that, that used to go somewhere else that wasn't taught to you until you begin to dig it out yourself and you found out it was for you. I tell you what, if God's got something for me, I want it. Amen. I don't want some old preacher to stand up there and tell me it's not for me and lie to me when I know God, when I read it in the Word, that God said it's to all of us. And it promised to you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour. 
How many knows what time the night hour is? Anybody know? Anybody else? Three o'clock in the afternoon. It started in the morning was the first hour. Nine o'clock was the third hour. That's when they accused him of being drunk. But Peter said, seeing this is yet the third hour of the day, they're not drunken as you suppose, see? And Christ was hanging on the cross on the, on the sixth hour. Thank God at noon. Amen. But anyway, it's the ninth hour. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. In other words, he was having a, a good old prayer with the Lord at three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and the Lord gave him a, a vision. But listen what he told him. And he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying to him, Cornelius. You know what God knew what his name did? Yeah. He said he knows our name. Yeah. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms have come up for a memorial before God. In other words, what you've done, the life you've lived, it's come up as a memorial before God. And now, but now I'm going to tell you, you got to do something. Yeah. He said, now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. And he lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So he, somebody, all he could do, Brother Jim, he prayed. He got, he got in contact with God. He was doing all that he knew. Amen. He had prayed. No, he didn't even pray an angel right now. But even the angel couldn't tell him what to do because Peter had the keys to the kingdom. Who opened the door on the day of Pentecost? Peter did. He had the keys to the kingdom. He said he's going to give him the keys of the kingdom. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is going to be loose in heaven. It's a 16th chapter of Matthew's gospel. Amen. Brother Peter had the keys to the kingdom. He was the only one that could go to the Gentile nation and open the door up. And if you get in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, and I know I'm going through a lot of stuff, but you can read there how that Peter said, you know that how in the beginning that God made choice among us, how that the Gentiles by my mouth would hear the word of the gospel. See, Peter was chosen first. God chose him first. He chose him to go with the message. Nobody could open the door until he preached the message and the kingdom message was preached. That's what opened the door. I know people say, well, Brother Peter's standing up there at the golden gate. But I'm going to tell you what, Brother Peter's already opened the gate. And it's up for me and you to get. He said the law and the prophets were until John. He said since that, the kingdom of God is preached and men press into it. We have to press into the same children. Amen. But now I'm going to send you down to a man named Peter. He's down in the city here and he said he lodges with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside and he shall tell thee what thou ought us to do. And when the angel went which spake unto Cornelius was departed he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers of them that waited on him continue. He just didn't send anybody. And they, he sent them down to get Peter. And when he had declared all the things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, as they went on the journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. And it was about the sixth hour. It was about 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Peter went up to pray. You know what? That was dinner time. That was lunch time. Amen. But before he was getting ready to eat, he said he went up on the roof. Amen. I tell you what, now listen what happened. And he said, and he became very hungry, and he would have eaten, but while he made ready, he fell into a trance. Amen. Now listen to this. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And he had been great, had it been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him said rise Peter kill and eat they saw all these animals, you know. And in the Bible, it talk, talked about the clean and the unclean. And, and Peter, he wasn't going to touch nothing unclean. But God was showing him as we go on here and read that he left a sheet down three times. 
And God kept telling him, don't call them what I've cleaned, call them an unclean. He was referring about the Gentile nation. Amen. And Peter would have trouble with this his whole life because he was with the Jews and the Jews, they didn't have no dealings with the Gentiles and they was even contrary toward him because he went down there and preached to them. But he convinced them finally that God had warned him in a dream that he had to go down there and preach to the Gentiles and it's right in this very chapter. I'm not going to read all this, but but uh, God was working on both sides. Yeah. He told Cornelius to go get him, yeah. and and he t then he began to talk to Peter. Now Peter wouldn't have went with no Gentiles. If there had been a bunch of Gentiles showed up and told Peter the the this. And Tyrion sold us, sent us down here to get you. He wouldn't have went with them because he, he said he never went in the Gentiles' house. He'd never had anything to do with them. He wasn't going in their house. Amen. But God began to show him. Thank God there was three men at the door. Amen. And he said, you go with them. And you don't, you don't ask no questions because I've sent them there. Amen. And I'll tell you what, that's what happened. Anyway, and he said, verse 19, and said, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. Peter went down and he said, I'm the one you're looking for. I'm the one God who told me you're coming here, and I'm coming to meet you. Amen. What is the cause wherefore you're coming? Now, Peter didn't know why they'd come. Amen. But he knew they was coming. Now listen. They said, Cornelius a centurion, a just man, one that feareth God and of a good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from, warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee unto the house and to hear words of thee. In other words, they were sitting down there to hear the words that he was going to say. Let me say amen. amen. All right. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with men and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied. Now you're going to find out that there were six Jewish men that went with Peter. Peter didn't just go by himself. He had witnesses when he went down there. Okay? And we'll read this on as we go. Amen. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and his fear, near friends, just like he got his whole family together. Just like tonight, we're we've worked hard this week, and we've asked people to come out. We're we're going to have a revival this weekend. We want everybody to come out. Amen. I've tried to get a hold of my kinsmen. I've tried to get a hold of my kids, and maybe even some of you. I've texted and I've called. I've tried to get people to come out because I want everybody. I didn't have a part of this. I want everybody to have joy in their life and have peace with God. Amen. It's for you tonight. I want to see marriages healed up. I want to see children back in place with their, their fathers and their mothers. I, I want to see God working on this tonight. Amen. Twenty-five said, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet. Worshipped him. You believe you believe God sent him? Yeah. Listen what Peter said. Peter but Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. He didn't hold his hand out for him to kiss his ring. No. You know that? They claimed Peter was the first pope. He wasn't a pope. No. Amen. Like they got the, the Pope, he'll hold his ring out for people to kiss it. I ain't gonna kiss his ring. Amen. He shouldn't have that old ring on anybody. Amen. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. I'm glad the Lord opened the door for me and you. Ain't you glad? Amen. This is the first door for the Gentiles. This is where we got in. Amen. Wherefore came I unto you without gainsaying? I didn't argue with him. Amen. And as soon as I sent for, I asked therefore what intent ye have sent for me. 
And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting. Oh, boy, he was doing something else there, wasn't he? Yeah. Amen. A lot of people don't even fast. They don't want to pray. Amen. But they're saying, I got him. I'm saved. But he said this. He said, thy prayers heard, thy alms, thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth at the house of one Simon the tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh, he shall speak unto thee. And immediately, verse 33, he said, Immediately therefore I send unto thee, and thou hast well done, for thou art come. Now therefore we are all here present before God to hear all things that are what? Amen. Commanded thee of God. All things that's been commanded, that's what we're here for. Amen. If we're Gentiles tonight, I don't know if you're a descendant of a Jew tonight or not. I don't know if we have any Jews here, but I believe that everybody here is a Gentile. Amen. We're not of Jewish descent. Amen. We're not of the seed of Abraham other than spiritually tonight. So this same door, when it was open for Cornelius, it was open to us. Amen. That's why God has opened the door for me and you tonight. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons. See, he don't just love the Jews. He loves everybody. Yeah. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh what? Righteousness. righteousness is accepted with him. This man was a righteous man. The, excuse me. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of these things. In other words, they, they knew it, thank God. They was witnesses of it, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. How many believe that he rose from the dead? Yeah. All right. Not to all the people. He did not rise. Everybody didn't see him rise. It was just to his chosen people. His chosen people. Amen. But not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, given unto us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. That's the ones we were talking about a while ago. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And to him give all the prophets witness. In other words, the prophets was witnesses of all this. And that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. But you got to have that name. Now listen. While Peter yet spake these words he said the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. See they didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. It hadn't been given. Amen. Think what a wonderful thing this was. Amen. Amen. And listen. And he said, and they of the circumcision. See, they were six brethren that was with Peter. Amen. And they was kind of reluctant to go down there too. But, but they went because of Peter. They was witnesses. Amen. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know they got the Holy Ghost? They got it the same way they did. When they got it, the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rushing wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They began to speak in other tongues and the Spirit gave over. That's what they did in the beginning on the day of Pentecost. And he's preaching the same thing. Verse 46. <coughs> Let's back up 45. Amen. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here's how he knew. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. That's how they knew. 
They wouldn't have believed it if there hadn't been a sign. He said tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. That's how I knew I got the Holy Ghost when I spoke in tongues. Amen. I was an unbeliever. I didn't believe it, but when I got it, I made a believer out of it. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Now wait a minute. These folks ain't been baptized yet. Right? On the day of Pentecost, he told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, right? For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises to you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. But listen to what Peter said then. He said, can any man forbid me? No, boy, I'll tell you what, Brother Johnny. I, in my mind, I can see these boys are speaking in tongues and they're shouting. Amen. I believe they was having a Holy Ghost meeting. But old Peter, he, he was kind of, didn't really, he was kind of left as what was going on anyway. See, because it was such a great, mysterious thing that God, because his mind was probably so full of the scriptures, and he was probably thinking about the scriptures, said, this is a stone that was said, not a two builders, it was the same as behind the head of the corner. And when they began to preach it to wasn't another name under heaven, amen, than Jesus Christ. He was probably all, God was putting all these things together with him. But you know what? He was thinking, you know, that repentance and remission of sins have to be preached in his name. Maybe we're leaving on water baptism here. They need to be baptized so they can get their sins remitted, so they can get the blood applied. But he didn't forget. Listen to what he said. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Can they forbid water now because they've received the Holy Ghost like the Jews did? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, let's go back over to the 36th verse and find out who the Lord is. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Verse 36 said, The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. What's it say, everybody? Lord. He's Lord of all. Y'all see this? I'm going to tell you what, this is where the church began. The book of Acts is the actions of the apostles. It's the acts of the apostles. And we see how that Jesus came in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we got four witnesses that told us about the life of Jesus and how he died and rose again. And all of them books he talked about how he was going to save the world. He came to give his life for the world. But then he goes in and they go into the book of Acts and it begins to tell how he done it. He how that he told the Jews to go down and wait. And he poured the Holy Ghost out on them. And how the church began to spread. And how they began to be persecuted. And how some of them was even killed. Thank God. And, and as he went on, then the door was opened up to the rest of the world. A Gentile nation got in. And when we read, and, if you, and there is a difference, but see, Abraham, he was given a covenant of God. God made to have a covenant with him. It's in the 17th chapter of the book of Genesis. You read in there, it was called a covenant of circumcision. And I believe everybody here knows what circumcision is. Most little boys get a circum circumcision. Some don't. Amen. But at one time, the Romans didn't circumcise their children. The Greeks didn't circumcise them. No other nation did. The only other nation that the men folks was circumcised was the household of Abraham. That's how come they was different from everybody else. But the Lord went on to show us that that circumcision wouldn't save nobody. But he talked about us putting on the circumcision of the heart. In Romans 2 and 28, he said it's not a Jew that is one outwardly of the, the circumcision of the flesh, but one inward that I have the circumcision of the heart. We need to have a heart change tonight. See, this book, this, it tells it just like it is. I'm not adding nothing to it, Brother Curtis. I'm just reading it, what's in here. And it's for you. It's for everybody. If you haven't got it yet, it's for you. Amen. I don't tell, tell people they don't have anything. Amen. If, you, if you've called on Jesus, you've got something in your life. Amen. If you're, if you're trying your best to walk for Him, you've got something. Amen. But I'm telling you, there's more for you tonight. Amen. If you go further, you can have it. Get on your knees and say, God, I want it. I'm going to pray. I believe if you stay and you keep praising God and you keep praising, maybe you ain't on your knees, maybe you're standing up, maybe you're riding down the road in your car, and when the Holy Ghost comes, it'll come just like it did to these brethren in the Bible. Can I read another scripture? Amen. Go with me to the 19th chapter of Acts. 
Some of you have read these scriptures. 19th chapter of Acts. But this ain't what I say. I'm reading it right out of the book. Nineteen chapter of Acts. And it came to pass that, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Disciples means followers, right? And he said unto them, he asked this question, listen, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Today people are teaching when you believe you got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Then why would Peter ask this question? Why would he ask him this question? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. A lot of people don't have it because they don't know. I've preached this message to people that they didn't know they had the Holy Ghost until they heard this message preached. And they realized, you know, I've been doing that. I've been speaking at times, but I didn't know what I was doing. I remember Brother Taylor talked about uh, that when they was kids, they, there's a water hole down here called a blue hole right down the road here. And that's where they all baptized. And he said they remember an old woman that was in the church. And, and back then they was from denominal churches. They didn't know nothing about it. They made fun of people speaking in tongues. He said that old woman, and she'd dance all around that old water hole up there at the baptism. She'd just speak in some kind of language. And he said, we was all kids. We'd just make fun of her. But you know what? They did ignorantly. They didn't know any better. That's like the day people. Don't say I don't believe it. Say I don't understand it. That's what they said on the day of Pentecost. It said some doubted. Amen. And some just didn't believe it at all. I'd rather be among them that doubt. Amen. If I don't understand something, I want, if God wants to give it to me, I want it. All right. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Now, when Paul heard this, he said, now there's got to be a reason. If these disciples here, how come they don't have the Holy Ghost? There's got to be a reason. And he said unto them, and to what then were you baptized? So it must have made a difference, didn't it? Yes. And they said unto John's baptism. But see, John didn't baptize for the remission of sin. He had the baptism of repentance. Jesus had not been crucified yet. He had not shed his blood yet. So all things he was doing, he was calling people to repent. So they was going in the water and getting baptized. Amen. But after the day of Pentecost, after Jesus' blood was shed, then the Bible said that it was baptized for the remission of sin. And he said unto them, And to what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism, now listen to what Paul said. Then said Paul, Verily, just the same thing I just told you, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Amen. You remember what John said? He saw Jesus coming. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He told him, he said, I must decrease. He must increase. He told his own disciples. He said, uh, he said, after here, you follow him. You go and follow after him. And when they heard this, this is what they said. And when they heard this, what Paul said, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. In other words, they hadn't been baptized right. Mm -hmm. The same message that Peter preached, the same message Paul's preached, the same thing that's being handed down. Now Paul's preaching the same message. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now listen. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Mm -hmm. You know what? That was the church that started at Ephesus. I believe this is where he started at, right here in the 19th chapter of Acts. Amen. I can find my church in the Bible. Can you? Amen. I can find the church of Jesus Christ. It's in this book. Amen. It's the one that started. He said in the 16th chapter of Matthew, he said, he said, 
Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. That's the first time it's mentioned in the Bible, in the 16th chapter of Matthew, when he's talking about the church. Amen. We're the church. It's, it's God's people. We're the body of Christ. We're the called out. Amen. We're the chosen ones tonight. Amen. A lot of people, they're in a church somewhere. They belong to something. got their name on the book, but they're not the chosen ones. They're not the called one. How do you know you're chosen? Right here by the book. How do you know you're called? Right here by the book. How do you know you're faithful? Right here by the book. He said he would be called the called, chosen, and faithful. Hallelujah. He said we'd be a chosen a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy people. Amen. He said we was the apple of his eye. And we love the Lord tonight. And you just lift your hands out. I'm glad I'm what he is tonight. I'm glad I'm what he is. And the Holy Ghost, it's for everybody tonight. It's for the whole world. And Jesus died for the sin of the whole world. And when this was opened up here, it needs to be preached to you. We ought to be shouting over this. Yes. Amen. This is where I got in. I couldn't be saved. Amen. And I, now, where, where, where can I find my salvation? I can go right back here and I can find it right back here. Right. If we can't find it in the Bible, maybe it don't exist. That's right. That's right. I'm not fighting with nobody. I'm not right. fighting with no religion. I wouldn't fight with none of you. I love everybody here. Yeah. But I will tell you that even if you got the Holy Ghost, there's more Holy Ghost. There's more Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know what? And there is charity. And there's gifts of the Spirit. And all these things, if you draw closer to God, God will put these things upon you. And He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The gifts are for you. Healing is for you. Deliverance is for you. There's nothing in here that's not for you. God promised everything. But He said, today you seek me with all your heart. He said, I'll be fair. I'm glad I started. Amen. And I put this mic on there and didn't even turn it on, did I? <laughs> Amen. How many love the Lord here? Yeah. Amen. He's a good God, ain't he? Yeah. I tell you what, Trevor, I love everyone. I really do. I know some of you have heard me preach this over and over and over, and you're going to keep hearing it too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is the kingdom message. Amen. Amen. This is what's going to set people free. Yeah. And I'm not trying to, I'm not doing no tricks tonight, and I'm not performing no miracles for nobody. Amen. Only thing I want to do is read you the undefiled Word of God. Amen. And I'm, I've got it out of the, the, the closest to the original transcripts, Brother Jim, that we could get, and that's out of the King James Version of the Bible. All these other ones, they put right a new Bible every year, every year. I just wonder, children, when our grandchildren get old enough to come to church, if they're going to even know what even God's got to say in His book. What I preach to you tonight, it's right here in this book. And I, but I'm telling you, people will tell you it's not for you. Because I'll tell you what, children, you've got to live the life to get it. You've got to walk and live a holy life. And you know what else? You've got to live a holy life to keep it. But I'll tell you what, if, you, if you've got repentance, if you've made a start, you've got something. But you've got to add to it. Some of you women are bakers. Sister Rainy makes some real good pies. And probably sometimes after she gets a bacon there and she'll taste it, she'll probably have to add a little bit of salt or add a little bit of sugar or add, add a little bit more, amen, to, to bring it about to where it's in its fullness. And that's what we need. That's what the Word of God is. It's, it's salt for us tonight. It's sugar, thank God. It's the, we're, we're the light of the world. You know, the Bible said you're the salt of the earth. Amen. We need, we need some seasoning in our life. Amen. And Jesus is that salt. And we need to season our bodies with it. Let's all stand.